The Phillies are 2-0. Oh, I've seen enough. We're going to the World Series. <laughs> Woo! Welcome in, everybody. <laughs> Excuse me. All the uh, the yelling got me wow. a little of a clump yeah, there. a little reddish, yeah. too, actually. Uh, but welcome in, everybody. <laughs> Happy Monday. This is the PHLY Phillies podcast. Jamie Lynch, Renee Washington, Tyler Zuli, our own John Foley will be in Fort Myers, Florida for the next two days. As the Phillies are set to take on the Red Sox today, the Twins tomorrow, and Renee, all that matters in the world this weekend. I'll tell you about my proud dad moment in a second. Uh, but the Phillies played baseball this weekend, uh -huh. and I don't care if you consider it not real baseball or not. It was just great to see. It was great mm -hmm. to hear. Um, it was really enjoyable. I wish Saturday's game was a little more accessible on TV. Um, and today's and tomorrow's games were, but that's a gripe that you're probably getting sick of me saying, uh, that's but it was fine. nice on Sunday. We based our day around it and we watched baseball. It was great to be back. It was, it was the weather this weekend was great. So it just felt like all of a sudden, all of the, the chaos and it was like that, ah, uh, moment of Zen of it's, it was it's nice, nice outside. We're sitting watching baseball. Uh, you know, you're you're hanging, chilling with your friends, with your family. And it was finally time. I mean, we've been talking so much. And I know we talked about it on Friday, Jamie. Like, the offseason moved, felt long, but it moved so quickly, too, at the same time. Yeah. And it's wild to think that we're already back. And then to see the guys out there in a game like situation oh, it was it was it was a thing a thing Ooh, of beauty flyers joe in the chat said he's going to the game tomorrow ah, well jamie speaking of congrats congrats in order to dave p first in the chat today chris number two uh listen it's great to see you guys were in here i know uh, i saw a lot of people in here some new some new names as well but Dave, Chris, Matt Deckard, Wayne Watson. What's up, Wayne? Um, we've got Ray Schumacher, say, Wayne? Kim, AJ Brown, with an exclamation point in the chat. What's up, AJ and Kim? Uh, hit AJ that Brown's thumbs up button. Here? We've got AJ Brown here. Sweet. He's yeah. calling into sports radio station. <laughs> now he's hopping in the chat button. of the Phillies. <laughs> exactly. On YouTube. Kevin at L Rock Philly. What's up? Nice to have you here. And I know people were getting ready to call 91. I know somebody was like, I think it was Dave said, I've got 91 dialed. See, this is where. Matt says Ray was first. No, I see Dave was first. <sighs> oh, wait. Wait. Uh, uh. Oh, son of a gun. Oh. Wait, apparently on YouTube, and I just realized this, there's an option for top chat and live chat. And I was looking at top chat. Ooh. Live chat is a whole different ball game. Stop the vote. Whoa, chaos. So all this time we've been completely wrong. It mm. was Ray. That was number one. Right. Even Chris then said Then Matt right. Decker, then AJ Brown, and Chris was number four. Holy moly. We've got a conspiracy, Stop guys. Stop the count. Stop the count. But what's up to everybody that's here? Nice to have you here live. Uh, the new faces, the usual suspects, everybody here. My bad. Holy crap. All right. Let's try this again. Happy Monday, Ray. You were number one. Congratulations. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, so, yes, there's a lot to get into from the game today or uh, from this weekend. Uh, we'll talk about all of that, some updates around baseball, including Cody Bellinger, uh, finally uh, signs with the team. We mm -hmm. got our top five DHs in baseball today, and we have Renee. I know you'll enjoy hearing this. It's the final week of Guess That Swing. So Woo! we have five more. Let me more. move away from the mic so I don't uh, deafen our yeah, Five radio. more Woo! Guess That Swings. You only have to be tortured. Five more times. And I have another game already teed up. Oh, okay. That's I'm going to run okay. for you guys. All and right. you're going to love it. All right. I'm super excited, actually. All I've right. got two games, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so we, we'll have a lot in store for you, but it's nice to have baseball back. All right, let's get into the weekend. So yes. basically, as Rich Hoffman puts it in our uh, daily newsletter, which is free and awesome, and you should all sign up for, uh, he basically said, Phillies pitchers bad on Saturday, <laughs> backup bats good. On Sunday, Phillies pitchers good, regular bats quiet. <laughs> if that's what you want, if that's kind of how it boiled down was, uh, you know, yeah. not a lot of the regulars played on Saturday. Uh, Colby Allard got the start there. 
Um, nothing went well. It was it was basically a football score on Saturday in Dunedin, 14-13. Yeah. Uh, as John pointed out, the missed extra point by the Blue Jays really cost them in that one. As the Phillies are victorious on Saturday, wasn't a whole lot to take out of that one from the game. I just followed along with John's yeah. tweets and box score. Um, I didn't dive into the, you know, like illegal Reddit streams or anything, even though I should have. Uh, but that's what <laughs> happened on Saturday. Seemed like kind of just a good get the rust off, get the bats awake, everybody hits type of baseball game. Yeah, exactly, Jamie. And I, you know, we were all very limited on Saturday, but thankfully Sunday that was not the case. Um, I know, and my computer is... I'm trying to find the notes now, but it doesn't matter. Colby Allard was talking after the game, um, just talking about how he wasn't really happy with how he started. And no, nope, not, I don't, I don't not think a great anybody start. was except the Blue Jays. Um, yeah, exactly. But he was saying how, you know, for him specifically, moving forward, he's going to be looking into, he definitely felt like he settled in, first of all. He said from the beginning, he felt like he just wasn't himself. He settled in as the game, you know, as the inning went on and into the second inning. And then he just wants to be better with his execution. And also his curveball was something he said he wants to lean into a lot more. So I think for everybody, it's Saturday um, was exactly that. It's that get the rust off, get the nerves off. You know, whether you're a Colby Allard, who's this is your first time with the Phillies, or you're somebody else like a, a prospect or a different name um, that's trying to prove themselves. It was exactly that. But there were definitely some positives that I know. Even Saturday and looking at the clips, because that's all we were limited to. Scott Kingery um, and Weston Scott Wilson Kingery, Day. You weren't excited about Scott Kingery, Jamie? I mean, like... You didn't see him out there? He he had a really nice game. Um, <laughs> I don't think Scott Kingery's making this team. Um, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, good for him, like, sticking with it and, yeah. you know, being resilient and all that. And it would be awesome. He's a great, like... Um, for a player to yeah. have to call up maybe in a pinch, you know, seven to 10 day injury stint type of thing. I don't know. The thing that I enjoyed about Scott Kingery, because now I've, now that we're fully into spring training, everybody's getting a chance to get their interviews and getting to speak. So you're going to hear from them directly. And Scott Kingery's comment about how he was also surprised. He was like, not all, like they were talking about the fact that a lot of people were surprised that he was still, he's still with the Phillies. And he was like, actually, I got caught by surprise a little bit too. <laughs> you know, I'm not even sure what the rule is. I think I reverted back to the minor league contract. He did. He's like, but at this, which you did Scott yeah. he's like it's just <laughs> at this point he's just focused on going out there and playing baseball um and just showing that he could play some good baseball because he's like there's not as much pressure it's just really good to get back out with the guys and show what you can do so yeah. Scott we're like uh. no more 14 million dollar uh, paycheck uh, no. this year Scott so yeah basically he reverted I was back. I was very so Weston Wilson was was solid he was he was a bright spot uh you know, he did have his the first homer of the spring for the Phillies, which we we love. Two run homer in the second, doubled in the fifth. I just don't know um, where he fits on this team. Well, no, and that's where. So he I does like, seem like a nice story. He's got some pop in his bat, all that. But yeah, there's really only one bullpen arm, which is the six starter. Whoever's going to win that, mm -hmm. Nick Nelson didn't have a good uh, debut. Um, and there's the one spot that seemingly is between Pache and Cave uh, for that fourth bench spot slash outfielder. So I don't know where Wesson Wilson makes the team. Him and Kingery might be those. But does Wilson have any options left? I, I actually have to look that so, up. So I had pulled it up because there was those details exactly. I don't think he um, does. No. Yeah, he's... Obviously, already on the. Yeah, I don't actually know those details either. Actually, uh, uh, well, I can't I'll find it either. Up. But um, but yeah, like there's promise there. It's just they're out yeah. of roster spots, so I don't know where they fit them in. Uh, but and he's they, he's definitely one of those. I know he's been mentioned um, in different pieces. They've been talking about the dark horses that can find themselves on the opening day roster or find themselves, you know, in a good spot on the forty man roster. And for uh, Weston Wilson, I know Rob Thompson was talking about him as a guy that can play any position except catcher. You know, he swings the bat. He's a 30-30 guy in AAA last year. He can run to. But as you mentioned, he's just one of those players that where does he fit? You know, how does he work into this roster? Because you already have other pieces that make more sense. And it's then Chris Pache goes out there, does well. Johan Rojas will, will definitely get into some other guys too. But uh, West, Weston Wilson is just doesn't fit. Yeah, uh, I don't know uh, how he makes his team, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, but, yes, let's get to Sunday where – and for Dave Dewar in the chat, uh, the game was on MLB Network. Yes. It was the Blue Jays feed. 
Uh, but us cord cutters here, uh, YouTube and Hulu people don't get MLB Network, so it became a pain in the ass uh, to find. But if you had Comcast and MLB Network, mm-hmm. you were probably able to watch some of the game. I was jealous of all of you. So yeah. Sunday, uh, proud dad moment. My, I told Skyler, you know, all week, yeah, the Phillies are playing this weekend. Sunday, they're going to be on TV. We get to watch it. And first thing she said when she woke up Sunday morning was, Dad, the Phillies play baseball today on TV. And I was like, I know. My heart was like. And then I, I go downstairs to start the waffles. And she's like, I'll be down in a minute. And she put on her jersey and came down to breakfast in her That's Philly so jersey. Cute. And I was, uh, I was dying. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh my! Uh, what so, you what you do? What was your react? Did you were you like I was cheering? Just like, I were know, you like, go Phils, right? Uh, okay, you played, kinda, it cool. yeah, you played, played it cool. You played it cool, but on the inside, inside you were melting. like dying. Yeah, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Uh, so we went out and did our grocery shopping and had lunch, and I was like, Sky, we got to go. The game starting. So <laughs> we were able to listen uh, to the first half inning uh, of L.A. and Fransky in I the love car, that. And, and just just hearing it on the radio too. Like, baseball is by far. Uh, Far and away the best on the radio. Oh, yeah. Um, and here in Fransky in L.A. It was just spectacular. Um, so a lot of good from oh. yesterday. So proud dad moment for me. I had I a proud to... auntie moment because oh. it was similar with my nephew. We came back from church and I, you know, I went and hung with the fam. And, you know, it's Sunday is a sports day. You know, and we, we start I always say we start them very young, much like you do in your household. We start them very young. You know, we're playing. You're watching. You're you're studying the game. Um, so we were, we were planning out our sports games for, cause there were a ton of NCAA games yesterday on for men's and women's, oh, especially yeah. women's basketball, of great games such this good games. Oh my gosh. And then, um, you know, so we're, so we're flipping through and my nephew's like the Phillies, the Phillies, he's like the Phillies won yesterday. And they're, and you know, he's, he's controlling the remote naturally and goes and pulls up the Phillies game. I'm like, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Don't even have to tell you. You already know what the deal is. Yeah. It was so great. this Sunday was def well, yesterday actually was awesome. I know Kim in the chat is saying. Your four, your fourteen year old daughter had an alert set on her phone love for yesterday's it. game. Parenting is complete. Yeah, good job. I love that too. <laughs> so uh, a lot of good from the game. Aaron Nola and the pitching staff Ooh-wee. came out dealing. Um, Aaron Nola, just a quick two innings of work there, but he looks spectacular. This is an even numbered year, so yeah. Aaron Nola is going to be really good. Well, also I Aaron Nola spoke a lot about, and I know uh, I've been reading different pieces about it. Todd Zalecki put out a piece about Aaron Nola. Uh, last year at the end of the year, feeling like he really hit his stride because it took him, as we talked about, it's a while to get the pitch clock figured out and knowing where to look and knowing how to even, you know, go into his pitches. And so he felt like last year he was really able to make that change. And he was talking about it, just how much of a difference it made for him and how they've been actively working on his slide step cut, um, you know, different aspects of his pitching. And specifically, Nola was saying, you know, this year he's just focusing mainly on the hitter, you know, the hitter and myself delivery wise pitches rather than the clock. And he's feeling a lot better this year. So in addition to it being an even calendar year for Aaron Nola, his his mindset, his overall approach has changed. And we saw drastically how that made a difference last year. His ERA prior to after that change, uh, it was like a, a 4.62 ERA in his first 30. And then he had a, a huge difference, to a 2.27 ERA in the final six starts where he's able to make those improvements, including the postseason. So if Aaron Nola continues that, we saw in the first two innings this weekend, if we can get that Aaron Nola, that's very exciting for what no, I think we're going to see a good Nola this yeah. year. Uh, thank you to everybody in the chat who did some Wes Wilson sleuthing. <laughs> uh, hypothetical man, I, I trust you here uh, that he has two, op- two options left. So uh, if that's the case, then Wes and Wilson okay. will be in Lehigh Valley with Scott Kingery, and they'll be your, uh, you know, your, your call-ups <laughs> in, uh, in case of injury. Yeah. Uh, so that's a good situation for them to be in. Uh, but yesterday, you know, the Phillies were on TV. It was great. My cousin came down with his nieces, and, uh, my nieces and nephews, and the kids were all playing, and it was a great family gathering, Renee. Baseball was on. The sun was shining. And you know what I did? I walked down to my fridge, and I cracked me a Miller Lite. Yeah, ah, boy. Baseball's back and a cold Miller Lite in my hand. Friends and family were over, and it was just spectacular. My mom stopped by. We started up the fire. We were talking baseball. We were talking Mick Abel, me and my cousin John. And it was just a really enjoyable day. And those moments can be made even better with Miller Lite because it's a great tasting light beer for people who just love year. <laughs> love year. I love every year I'm on this earth, but I also like my Miller Lite beer to go with my years on earth. Uh, and a new year is a perfect time for friends, family, and great tasting light beer with Miller Lite. It's going to be beach season soon, you know? And Miller Lite has got you covered. Only 96 
calories and just 3.2 grams of carbs for every 12 ounces. Miller time is always a good time. It's the original light beer since 1975 and still the best one. And you know what? I can get a Miller light everywhere beer is sold. And when we go to the Philadelphia airport, I can get a Miller light. And when we land in Clearwater, I can have a Miller light. Miller light is everywhere. Pretty much beer is sold. It's simple. Uh, live malted barley for a rich, balanced toffee note flavor and the iconic golden color. Miller Lite is brewed for taste. It hits different than other light beers. It's the best light beer, in my opinion. And you can find it everywhere you get beer. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. Go to MillerLite.com slash PHLY fills to find delivery options near you. Or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. Taste like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Again, just 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Yeah, well, I know in the chat, right, you're mentioning how your four-year-old is already getting into it. Also, you're doing parenting, right? Dawn, yes. I also was raised to have all Phillies games. All, all games are always on the radio if you're not home, on the TV if you are home. And Spiral Out, it is time for baseball, summer, barbecue, and beer. And it is also almost time mm. for us to be down in Clearwater. The countdown continues. We are just 16 days away from us venturing down to Clearwater ourselves as we're going to have our very first PHOI spring training takeover. You guys can join us down in Clearwater from March 13th through the 18th. We will be partnering and working with Philly Sports Trips doing a tremendous job. They just sent us our itinerary of all the fun things that are happening. Of course, going to the games, but also taking part in some opportunities like getting on a private yacht for St. Patrick's Day. Well, we're, we're going to have cater dinner and drinks and have a booze cruise to spend the holiday. And then, of course, with Philly Sports Trips, they handle all of the logistics. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just go down and be ready for the experience because they've got you covered with flights, hotels, game tickets, transportation. So join us down in Clearwater as we're going to have our PHOI spring training takeover, working with Philly Sports Trips again March 13th through the 18th. Don't wait to check out those details. You can go to allphly.com slash events. To learn more and book your trip today. Yeah. So uh, the nitty gritty of the rest of the game yesterday, which was pretty great. We touched on Nola there. Uh, this the pitching in general was spectacular. They had mm -hmm. a no hit, a combined great league, grapefruit league no Insane. hitter going through seven innings. I know um, it was getting us all irrational because it's yeah. like it's just spring training and you got to take this with a grain of salt. But to see a no hitter and as the game's progressing, it's like wait a minute. Yeah, oh boy, it's yeah. happening. Yeah, and they, and they pulled out the big guys yesterday. You know, Sir mm -hmm. Anthony got some action. Mick Abel got some action. We'll get into his stuff in a minute. Uh, some of the, you know, bigger name guys got some pitching yeah. uh, time yesterday, and they all look pretty good. Uh, so the one, I'm not going to lie, I expected Aaron Nola to be good. The one I was excited to see was Mick Abel. Mm -hmm. uh, you forget how big he is. We talked about it in our Down on the Farm report, but that 6'5 frame Huge. really really jumps out on the mound uh, and he gets on top of you quick. So it was really nice to see out of Mick Abel, really encouraging start there. Uh, now, Tyler, this is some, some deep uh, analysis here on, on Mick because he, he's changed his spin rate on his slider. He's mm -hmm. now a gyro slider. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with the gyro, it's uh it's kind of supposed to look like a fastball without a, a ton of heavy rotation, but it's supposed to move um, and be deceiving. So Nick has kind of tightened up his slider delivery. He touched 97 on the gun, hung in the 94 to 96 mm -hmm. range, and the gyro, he got two Ks with that. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like the tweaks that they made in the offseason that they're working on, I don't want to say have they figured it out, yeah. but it's a really encouraging start for Mick Abel there. Uh, and anytime he's on the mound this spring, I, I, I think it's must-watch TV. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing that we're now starting to see the different adjustments you guys have been making, and especially on the pitching side, but also on the hitting side, that even though it is just a spring training game, it is obviously just the first weekend, you're starting to see, okay, this is what they've been working on. Here's what's positive, here's what's, here's what's not. And I think Mick Abel was one of those positive Yigo, takeaways I Yigo. had. Um, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> It's fine. But I get I will a gyro. Say <laughs> I, I've always called it a gyro. A gyro, a gyro, I believe, is what the proper pronunciation is of, uh, you know, if we're in Greek uh, or in Greece, I think you, uh, I'm not you go gyro. I'm not going to lie. I don't know on that one. But I'm, I've always called it a gyro. Okay. Provolone John's, yeah, thinking gyro. But 
Um, Tyler, I will gyro say it was, was, okay it was here, a no hitter until it was jinxed on social media. Sure. I agree with you guys, Matt, that it was jinxed. Social media did ruin that, but it was it was great all the way through the the first <laughs> seven innings. Now, because, Tyler, do you go gyro or gyro? Well, so the the food that you're referencing is gyro because yes. it's it's Greek. It's gyro. The pitch in the baseball gyro, right? is a gyro ball yeah. because it was it was. Not in, I would I don't know about invented, but like kind of cultivated and used a lot in Japan. Yeah, so the I, Japanese league. I, I assume pronunciation's <laughs> probably a little bit different. Yeah. Um, from what I've gathered, based on watching some of the guys who did throw the the typical like quote gyro ball like Daisuke Matsuzaka, it is gyro when it comes to baseball. Yes, it's gyro when you're ordering the food. a delicious Correct. meat. Uh, I love when they pull out that knife and slice the meat off like the what do you call that little contraption that little spit. But I they don't have even the, know what meat it's called, spit. actually. Oh, and they God. just cleanly slice it. Oh, it's so good. I want one of those it's in like my house. Beauty. I just want a spinning meat blob on my kitchen counter at all times. <laughs> just take a little slice off as a snack. Yeah. Yeah? You yeah. see where I'm coming from, Renee? Uh, yeah, I get you know? it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That'd be nice. So anyway, uh, yes, he apparently switched <laughs> to the blob. to the gyro. The gy now I gyro uh, slider and... <laughs> The point of switching to it is that it's supposedly easier to throw for strikes. If you right. lose uh, your command a little bit with uh, your old slider, apparently this is a great way to bring you back and throw strikes. And as we all know, since we talked about Mick Abel this offseason, you know, the, the command, the control is the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like that's one of the approaches that they changed. They also did it with Griff McGarry and completely yeah, reworked Griff him. Yeah, Griff McGarry's. Uh, but the early mm -hmm. return here on Abel is that he threw him for strikes and it looked pretty good. So yeah. uh, really encouraging start for Mick Abel. I, I don't think he has a real shot at making the opening day roster as that sixth starter. They probably want to get him some more minor league service time and, yeah. and confidence up before. Uh, but I think there's a chance he pitches for the Phillies this year if he stays on a good spring. Yeah, and you know who else was very encouraging, Jamie? And you know who I'm, who I'm about to bring up next because you have yet to talk about him. Yo, Ro. Yo, Ro. Yeah. Johan Rojas. Okay, listen. Johan Rojas, we've been all talking about how he's going to be able to adjust. We've been seeing him bunting and practicing his hits. Two for four with a triple, three RBIs. Did have two strikeouts uh, on Saturday. Struck out, swinging on a 2-2 slide on the plate. But then he did come back. Rob Thompson gave him another opportunity. Um, and he came back out there and had a much better at bat. And he was saying he was swing swinging at strikes. And that's something he's been working on. It's gotten results, and he feels extremely happy. I think it was a solid debut for Johan Rojas. Solid uh, opening for I, I Christian Pache. Solid uh, job by Rob Thompson giving him that fourth at bat. Yeah, because it Be allowed him... To, you, to you leave need on to instill, a high note. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you need to instill that confidence. So and that's especially one of the, game one. The other changes that you could tell, I think you, it was pretty noticeable. Johan Rojas has a different approach, uh, approach at the plate. He's mm -hmm. trying to do... The thing with Kevin Long is he tries to minimize everyone's movements. Yeah. And you kind of saw Rojas like more... A little... A little more patient, back on his back foot a little bit more, and, and trying to quiet down the motions. And he did start 0 for 3. Yeah. Uh, and chased a couple balls there, but for the most part, looked competent in the box. And, and Rob Thompson, after the game, said, yeah, I wanted to give him that fourth at-bat there because I thought mm -hmm. he had three good at-bats uh, and wanted to see what he could do. And luckily, he did. And 97.8 miles an hour off the bat, smokes it to right center mm -hmm. field. And that's the thing with this kid. If he puts anything in play, his speed is going to oh, become yeah. one of the, the nastiest tools the Phillies have. So, exactly. you know, good good job, Johan, leaving the field on a high note yesterday. Yeah, and uh, the guy that's, you know, pining for a job behind you, Christian Pache, uh, sends one into the into the berm. I always love the berm in oh the my outfield. Gosh, yeah. they can, I had to look it up yesterday because we were curious what attendance was. The berm says it can fit 1,500 people. Oh. Uh, 8,500 in the stadium is the paper capacity. 1,500 in the outfield berm and Pache sent a souvenir out to the berm yesterday. Uh, so yeah. really good, to, really his, good to see. Yeah. And his two at bats to have uh, two hits and two of those RBIs and you scored two runs. Christian Pache was, was definitely ex exciting to watch because we've talked about Pache. We've talked about, you know, him along with the guys like Jake cave and different names that we brought up and Pache, this is how you're starting off the spring training. Uh, we're encouraged by that. But I will say I just enjoy the fact that these guys are getting confident. It's nothing like being able to see the ball hit off your bat, especially you're helping your you're helping to score runs, you're helping to keep, you know, 
keep the inning going and to have that early confidence builder. That's what this is all about. And so I I felt like this weekend was, as you mentioned, each game was a little bit different in what we had in terms of pitching and the, the at bats and the productivity, but overall you can take away individual guys that you really feel like, okay, that was a huge confidence builder for you because you've been training all off season. You've been excited to get back to show what you can do. And then weekend number one, you get a chance to do just that. So yeah, Christopher Christian O'Donnell. Pache, well Christopher done. Christopher O'Donnell in the chat is getting real baseball Ooh. horny here. Uh, and everybody What's in the up, chat, Chris? make sure you're smashing that like button while you're here. We love you. We appreciate you. Christopher O'Donnell busting out the launch angle on, <laughs> on uh, Johan Rojas's triple. Says, you know, uh, basically almost 100 mile an hour exit velocity with a 22 degree launch angle. Something he wasn't doing last that year. Part, that's the key. He was not doing that last year. Yeah, so I think you could huge. see the obvious changes. With, oh, yeah. Not that I watched Abel a ton last year, uh, but I think you can, when it's pointed out to you, you can tell. And then the same with Rojas and his apl- mm-hmm. approach at the plate. Uh, so make sure you're following along John Foley at 2008 Phils with a Z because he will be in Fort Myers today as the Phillies are going to be taking on the Boston Red Sox. Uh, the lineup is out today and leading off leading off for the Phillies <laughs> playing second base today sometimes plays left field may occasionally play third first uh, anything but catcher Whit Merrifield uh, and then your boy Yo Rose batting second Derek Hall that big slab of meat hitting third uh, Edmundo Sosa he is a big slab of meat. he is but a you big man not saying slabs of meat JB well, I got meat on the brain now. yeah <laughs> what up chat uh, Derek Hall batting down. third. Edmundo <laughs> Sosa is your cleanup hitter today, where Edmundo Sosa was, of course, born to hit in the four oh, hole. Yeah. Uh, in the five hole, you got third baseman Cody Clemens, and we'll touch on the boom thing in a second. Uh, Aramis Garcia is catching. David Dahl playing left field. Nick Podkull. Did I get that right, Tyler? Podkull Pod- playing yes, first base. Good job. Okay. We learned his name and are down on the yes. farm. Proud uh, of you. Cal Stevenson playing right. And pitching for your Phillies, David <laughs> Buchanan. And no, it's not 2015. Uh, so there's your lineup today. Again, this is an away game for the Phillies, so not going to be broadcast on TV. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to look at the TV schedule, but I think we get one either Wednesday or Thursday this week. Uh, but anyway, it's just nice to have the Phillies playing baseball. It every is, day, every and day. that's what Jay's saying. Baseball is so back. Absolutely. Uh, listen, it's back. As you were talking about the, you know, today's lineup. Just some updates around the team because I know people were curious, but there have been the updates around Alec Bohm, who did have those neck spasms, as was reported on Friday. Alec Bohm is doing much better, is expected to play on Wednesday. Uh, that game is going to be on NBC Sports. So you can check that out. NBC no, Sports well, Plus. Plus. Excuse me. Oh, Sports geez. Plus. I was waiting for My bad. Uh, sorry, Jamie. Got you excited. So who's, that game is going to be on NBC Sports Plus that you can check that out. So Alec Bohm is expected to play in that game. That's also going to be the game when Bryce Harper and JT Bermuda are supposed to make their spring debuts. The Phillies have been easing them back in. Um, nothing alarming there, but just working them back in slowly. So exciting, exciting. Uh, and a little bit odd about the next spasm. I know people on Twitter were going crazy. Like, what happened? Where did this come from? How do you get neck spasms? I don't know how you get neck spasms. Neck spasm. neck, I was I was wondering that because people were like, I feel like the only way you can get a neck spasm is in like a car accident. And I'm like, whoa, 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 pump no, your no, brakes. No, no, you can just get you old can literally and you get spasms all the time. Sleep funny and your neck just be you have a stiff neck. Yeah. And that sucks. Um, but you know what doesn't suck is that we have a great deal out for you guys you can take advantage of. That's right, because right now across our website, we've got a 30% off sale on all of our PHOY gear. So you can head over to our PHOY locker at allphoy.com uh, slash locker, I believe is the next slash. And you can check out, there it is, our PHOY locker sale, 30% off everything Monday through Wednesday. That starts today all the way through that Wednesday game on NBC Sports Plus that you'll be able to take advantage of the sale. We've got all of our merch that you can check out. You see it on your screen there for those watching on YouTube. For those on our podcast platforms, head on over to our PHOI locker to see our great sales and uh, take advantage of those deals, deals, deals. Yeah, 30% <laughs> off is great. You can't afford not to buy it, people. Move, move, move. Um, <laughs> a lot of meat talk andale, in the andale, chat. Andale. Yeah, you're starting that, yeah. JD. You're, you know how to get the chat going because so, you guys love talking about ridiculous things like meat. Meat. You know, Derek Hall is a big slab of meat. Oh uh, Dave P says Arby's for the win. Now, I have a confession. Uh, Arby's is, like, really, like, resurgent. You have the meat. Yeah, like, as a... Oh, wait, what is it? 
People, I've got yeah, the meat. Uh, we, we have, we've got we the have meat. The meat. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got if the If there meat. was ever a, a, a verbal sponsorship that works with Jamie the best, <laughs> it might be our meat. the meat. Uh, but apparently, have, have either of you ever had the horsey sauce? I, I will not eat like Arby's. Arby's. No? Yeah, Tyler and I, I'm, I'm no. not an Arby's. I, I got to try I it actually, again. You this know what? Have sauce, I ever had say, Arby's? When, when when I was young, my dad would take us to Arby's occasionally. I'm not an Arby's person. But I don't think there's any around me, so I haven't had it in like forever. But apparently this horsey sauce is quite tasty. I don't know. In the last I don't I don't think I've ever had Arby's. We have the meat. <laughs> yeah, we like, have I, the meat. Yeah, no. Um I've I there's many others that I would yeah, I would put over that. Yeah, the Oxford Valley Mall used to have an Arby's uh, growing up and uh, after games we would Malls don't have anything anymore because yeah. they just are That's vacant true. large buildings. Uh, now. so the next game on it's actual just, just NBC Sports Philadelphia on your TVs is Saturday, but again Wednesday will be on the NBC Plus. Um so um all right, a couple other things to get to around baseball before we wee get to wee. our top five um uh, excuse me, DHs. And one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the Phillies did make a minor move. Uh, they brought in a... This is breaking news. What are you talking a about? catcher, Cam Gallagher. <laughs> uh, could be a real person, could not be. Uh, but it sounds like Raphael Marchand, uh, their, you know, kind of next catcher through the system, potential, uh, has a fairly serious back injury. So the quote from Rob Thompson uh, was, he's going to be down for a bit. I don't think it's season ending or anything like that, but we need some help around here. And Cam Gallagher was out there and we went out and got him. He's a good guy. Can catch. Uh, yeah. So again, Marshawn, just like this seems. <laughs> Raphael can, Mar can catch can is the catch. only prerequisite. Do you can have, catch. Does your heart beat and can you <laughs> catch mean, a baseball? Okay. Can catch. Yeah, Raphael Marshawn seems to get hurt all the He's breathing and he can catch. His numbers actually aren't bad. Uh, he's 31 year old. Cam? Oh, Cam. I'm talking, I yeah. You meant yeah. Cam, who can catch. Uh, say can that catch. 10 times fast. 31 year old Lancaster, PA native. So, uh, from right in our western parts of the state, appeared in 227 major league games between the Royals, the Guardians. That was from 2017 to 2023 over his career. Last season, he made the Guardians opening day roster after attending their, their spring training and then appeared in 56 games with 53 starts at catcher. And then he's hit a 211 with 33 doubles, seven homers, 46 runs, uh, RBIs, and was a um, second so, second round pick overall back in 2011. So I mean, he's gotten some major league baseball play, yeah. and he can catch. I br yeah, he can catch <laughs> according to Rob Thompson. Uh, I bring From it up Mannheim. just because it seems like Raphael Marchand, man, like just can't catch a break. And that does when they say, I don't think it's season ending. That's a pretty serious injury he's going to be dealing with there. Yeah, because if it's even being, it's like one of those things. Like, why did you even too. mention season ending? Yeah. Like, what made you know? Usually, I say, oh, it's just, it'll be out for a few weeks, and you know, we'll reevaluate re -evalu from there or something. Yeah. But it's not season ending makes it a little bit concerning. Uh, and then before we move on to MLB news, MLB Pipeline put out their um, top power prospect within each organization, yes. uh, and no surprise for the Phillies. You want to take a guess, Tyler? <laughs> uh, my guess would be Carlos De La Cruz. It is not, actually. Really? It is Aiden Miller. Uh, so they're going top prospects, obviously. Well, no, they just think power. They just think he has a chance to really translate to power at the major league level. Um, you know, grew up not far away from uh, the Phillies camp in Clearwater and Florida kid and uh, MLB Pipeline thinks they might be factoring in, Tyler, that De La Cruz might not even make it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, so the, like they're, they're probably picking it. guys that they think are at least are definitive MLB players. Probably correct. Mm -hmm. uh, so Aiden Miller gets there, uh, listed there as the Phillies' top power prospect. All right, Major League Baseball, Scott Boris signed one of his agents this weekend. Cody Bellinger is heading back to the Chicago Cubs. It kind of seemed like Toronto had a shot at him. Maybe the Giants were going to get in the mix. But it does seem like the Cubs were always kind of the most likely landing spot. So he gets a three-year deal for, what was it, 80 million? 80 mil. And it was 30, 30, 20 are the breakdowns. But he has player opt-outs after years one and two. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like this was kind of a one-year $30 million deal. Now, apparently some of the language of the opt-outs um, make it a, a little difficult to just straight like i haven't read the contract obviously i'm not an agent but one of the things i was reading on it said 
Uh, it's essentially going to be a two year deal because some of the opt outs were uh, a little prohibitive yeah. towards him. So either way, the Cubs should be pretty decent this year. Uh, they get their their big guy back in Cody Bellinger. So they are a better baseball team today than they were on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, something that uh, Cody Bellinger had, uh, you know, reports had indicated he mentioned that he wanted to rebuild his value after this, you know, during the season. And he wanted to really be able to cash in as a free agent and get paid off, paid in a big way. Uh, of course, he was offered the qualifying offer by the Cubs that one year $20.3 million deal. Um, so for him to return back on a three-year $80 million deal, you know, I guess you can say in that sense it paid off for him. It's interesting what Scott Boris's clients have going on right now. Yeah. Uh, so at least one of them and Cody Bellinger is off the board and is, has finally found a team. Um, but, yeah, that, that deal seems a little bit interesting uh, overall when you look at, like, the nuts and bolts of what they've shared. So yeah. Cody Bellinger is a Cub. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a bad deal for the Cubs if it – if it does end up just being a one year, $30 yeah. million dollar deal, because there is risk with Cody Bellinger that he reverts back to, mm -hmm. you know, the struggles. He's had a very interesting career arc from a world series MVP to a guy that couldn't hit yeah. to a resurgence last year. So there is some risk involved with him. Uh, obviously the potential is through the roof there, um, but it'll be interesting. I guess Christopher Morrell Tyler is going to be, I know he's been getting a lot of time at third base in camp, um, but is he going to be a DH? I think he, he might end up being their DH would be mm, my DH yes. slash third baseman, but the Cubs, they, they could be pretty decent this year, especially if, uh, uh, Im Imanaga is as impressive yeah. as, uh, who I forget who had the quote that I'm going, he was going out to buy his rookie cards all over the place after facing him in batting practice, but the Cubs could be pretty decent this year. So, yeah. you know, uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, yes, and you brought up Scott Boris. Um, this does seem like it's getting a little weird because <laughs> Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, uh, Matt Chapman, J.D. Martinez, there's a lot of – those guys are all undeniably good baseball players that would help majority of teams they joined. Yet here we are on the doorstep of March mm – -hmm. And this isn't like the Bryce Harper thing. Nope. Where you like knew he was just trying to get, you know, over 300 million and it goes into March. This seems like it's Scott Boris's plan. I don't want to say backfiring because he's really good, but like this does seem weird at this point. Yeah. And now you have to look at like true teams that can contend with money. Why are they not like knocking these guys' doors down right now? how many teams out there can actually afford these guys right. and are a contending team? I mean, off the top of my head, maybe the giants, but they're not like real contenders. Mm -mm. Um, not, not in the immediate future. The Rangers already said they're pretty much done with their spending. Yep. I would think the Seattle Mariners should get involved maybe with like a uh, uh, Blake Snell or a Montgomery and just really just go for it. But there's not a lot of teams uh, that aren't kind of set that have money yeah. to spend. And I wonder, I wonder what is like, I'd love to be in the room for some of these front <laughs> office conversations about Boris agents and what they actually think. Like, is this bet? He, he's got a stellar track record, obviously, but yeah. like it's a little weird that these four pretty, well, three of his aren't signed yet. And like, these were like the marquee guys on the market. Yeah. And now you're like, Okay, who's actually going to go after him here? I mean, we remember back in November, Aaron Nola, Blake Snell, you know, all we were looking at all the different free agents. It's like, whoa, there's a lot of big names out there. Where are they going to land? Who's going to who's gonna make the first move? Um, of course, with the Phillies signing Aaron Nola back, that alleviated any fresh, you know, concerns or scares around who's going to be, you know, the number two pitcher for the Phillies. But then we also were talking about, okay, well, when Shelby Otani – moves when Yamamoto moves like things are going to open up things are going to open up things are going to open up and we kept just saying that over and over again and here we are it's getting into the spring training it's and like, what's going now on? it's at a point I don't imagine any team as you mentioned the list that we've heard it's been the Angels Giants Yankees with Blake Snell probably but it yeah, hasn't been a lot there haven't been a lot of teams that we even heard forget the options they have we haven't even heard reports around a lot of teams the fact that the Phillies are a favorite for jo Jordan Montgomery means Jordan Montgomery's probably not going to get signed yeah. anytime soon because these are teams that aren't 
really actively going to go out of their way to, to spend that big amount. They're going to try to wait because there's also not a need. Like the Phillies specifically, we can all agree Jordan Montgomery would be great to have, oh, no but he's not a necessity. Deals. You don't have to have him. No, but the longer so there's this no takes, pressure. the more the market collapses. Right, on but them. there's almost it's almost like teams. Are in the a great teams spot that here. are interested in the in in Boris's guys don't have an immediate urgent need to sign them, and they're not desperate to sign them, especially with how much money they're asking for. So it's a weird standoff that like. There's no pressure on the side of the teams, but these guys need to find a team ASAP. Yeah, it almost, so their market, their number needs to not drop. That, like Scott Boris is always going to get the best players, so like teams are always going to be interested. Yeah, um, but it does feel like this is kind of a little bit of a middle finger from clubs to Boris. That's like, what people were saying that this that a lot like of it execs, feels like he's turning people mm-hmm, off a little bit, and a lot of execs have apparently been. Kind of exactly as you mentioned, Jamie, on the side of nope, we we know Scott Boris, we know how he operates, and we're not gonna take the bait. We're gonna just wait it out because the the teams are fine. It's his guys that are yeah. sitting out there, you know, jobless at and, this point. And I'm with the MBD. Like he said, I don't know how good of a player Matt Chapman actually is. Tremendous yeah. club, pretty good player. That's the other he thing. says his OPS in a full season hasn't been above eight hundred since twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. So like Scott Boris clearly, as any good agent does, over inflates Yep. You know, their players markets and, and teams might be looking at Matt Chapman and he's looking for, you know, say six years and yeah. $140 million or whatever. And teams are like, yeah, Matt Chapman ain't worth that, Scott. So, <laughs> like, uh, go find another job somewhere else. And now you're at, almost at March. Uh, and these three guys, I do think Snow's yeah. going to be a Yankee, but Jordan Montgomery, Matt Chapman and J.D. Martinez. I don't know where the hell these three and are And like play. Chris is saying, for someone like Montgomery, is he worth losing draft capital? He's saying in the chat, you know, he's guessing his signing would put the Phillies over the next threshold. That's the other thing. Like teams, yeah. teams, if you're going to go over that threshold with a signing, do you want it to be a one-year guy? Do you want it to be someone that's, you know, or someone else that maybe is a fit more for the future long-term? So I, it does definitely seem like, and I know Dave Dewar, you mentioned, teams are holding out. I do get the vibe. They're, they're holding out because they're tired of, you know, feeling like they've been pressured by Scott Boris to spend, spend, spend. Uh, and nope, we're going to show you. So yeah. Here so, we have uh, it. We'll see what happens <laughs> there. You know, you would, I feel like we've said this every week for like the last three or four weeks. Like this could be the week for Scott Boris clients. Like Cody know. Bellinger at least started it. And now maybe they're realizing Chapman isn't going to get as much as they want. Uh, whatever. But we'll see yeah. if those guys, uh, you know, get moving this week. All right, let's get to our top five designated hitters around baseball. Now, designated hitter is a very fluid uh, <laughs> position, uh, whereas Kyle Schwarber was a left fielder last year, and this year he's back to his rightful place, not playing <laughs> defense on a Major League Baseball field. Uh, but, Renee, before we do that, I know Kyle Schwarber did something very cool that you saw on social media this weekend. Uh, before we dive into it, Tyler, do you have the photo there? that we can share. Uh, apparently the Phillies were out at a team dinner Look in Clearwater, uh, I guess in a back room situation. Uh, the, the elites from us oh, commoners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think Kyle was out taking a bathroom trip and saw the kid in the jersey, went over to the table and took a picture with him, probably on his own. And I think this yeah. just speaks to how likable and rootable this Phillies team is right now. And that's why I wanted to share that because that was the moment. Uh, shout out to at Stephanie 2194 who tweeted who this say, out Steph? at little, little Steph who was literally saying exactly that they were out her, her, her son, but they were out to their favorite restaurant in Clearwater. So they're already at their favorite restaurant in Clearwater. They see their, and then uh, just out of the blue, you see the Phillies in the back room, as you mentioned, because there is always that separate space for the VIP types of, you know, incognito VIP spots. So randomly, the Phillies were eating in the other room, she was saying. And then Schwarber, as you mentioned, saw her older son with his jersey on, came over, took a picture with them. Uh, those are the moments that just like Kyle Schwarber, the Phillies, they're different. They, they get it. They understand how important it is. They're sitting down, having dinner in a restaurant, and he, nobody was pressuring him to, like, she didn't say they went over and asked. No. They weren't knocking on the door saying, can I have a picture with you or anything like that. They weren't even, I'm sure they were excited, but... Kyle Schwarber, out of the goodness of his heart, as Pretty a cool. dad himself, got up, walked over. And even in that picture, at first, I was kind of scrolling through. And when I saw it, I was like, I didn't even realize it was Kyle Schwarber at first. He's definitely slimmed down, but that wasn't the only reason. It was just such a casual, you know, just Kyle hanging with some some fans. Just very casual, very low-key. Uh, so I love that moment. That's why we enjoy this team so much. They, they get it. They understand the importance of those little things and making 
though i'm sure those kids are going to remember that for the rest of their oh, lives yeah fan for fan for life yeah there. uh so that's a, a great little hat tip there by kyle schwarber and Love that and this team just is rootable mm -hmm. all right let's get to our designated hit hitters of which we'll be talking about Kyle Schwarber. I think he must have known we were getting into DHs today yeah. because he's like, let me do something else nice out here. So <laughs> DH is a, uh, an interesting one. You know, there's uh, a lot of guys that five spot for me was tough. Uh, and there's guys you can project. Uh, you know, there's vets like Yelich might be a DH. He might still play left yeah. field some this year. Um, there's guys like JD Martinez out there. You know, there's uh, there's Eloy Jimenez who you can project ahead. Like there's a, there's a, it was an interesting because I think the th top three are more or less locks, um, I would mm -hmm. think, and then four or five. So I'm interested to see where you two come in. I'll get it started. I'm going with a guy that to me has become like um, the new Nelson Cruz, where <laughs> he just finds the back of his baseball card year after year after year and becomes a total vagabond and just goes team to team to team to mercenary. He's still currently a free agent. I'm giving a little hat tip to J.D. Martinez. Uh, you know, this is a guy who's definitely getting up there in age. So, like, if you wanted to project one of these younger kids to finish this year better, I think that's a good strategy. I'm giving a, a, an homage to the, the old head who last year pretty much had a two-war, 33 home runs still. He can bat you 270. You know, he's a 287 career hitter. Uh, had over 100 RBI still. You know, doesn't have the wheels that he once did, only 60 runs scored. His OPS plus was a 134 last year. Uh, this guy can get on base, too, at like a 330, uh, actually career clip of 350. Um, you know, most categories were down last year, but this guy is just like, when you say professional hitter that's going to give you some pop, J.D. Martinez to me is just like, he's kind of like a perfect DH. You just know what you're going to get when you get J.D. Martinez, and he's still a free agent. I, I don't quite understand it. Um, yeah. but we'll see where he ends up. Yeah. JD Martinez was definitely one I had considered in mind. Now my uh, number five, not perfect, especially given his controversy off the field. I'm going with the big bear down in Atlanta, Marcelo Zuna. If he's still at that DH role, listen, his baseball talents, despite how you may feel about him as a person, you cannot ignore stop the drunk, numbers. Stop drunk driving. You can't Marcel. ignore the numbers that he's put up. Now, last year at the start of the season, he kicked off 2023 with just uh, five for 59, two homers, and a 10 WRC+. Plus. After that time, he went on to hit, oh, he homered three times in a three-game series against Miami, and that was the change for his season, where he went on from May forward to hit 297, 366, 603, with 38 homers and 156 WRC+. Plus. And to have a 40-homer season uh, with a 3-3 F4 as a DH, number five for me that he had a turnaround season and that was honestly I felt like when you look at the prior seasons compared to 2023 20, he did take a step it was a, a, a more mild season um probably because of just maybe even that less drama off the field off the pitch and so for him as I'm getting in my soccer terms here for Ozuna number five bam who you got Tyler yeah so this number <laughs> five came down to two guys here and, and actually probably could have come down to three guys JD Martinez was the first one that I didn't put on the list simply because I think it's tough to project the guy what his numbers are going to be when he doesn't have a team yet. And, That's and, how I was feeling. And, to be and, and listen, I agree with you, Jamie. He does feel like a plug and play type DH, yeah. where like as soon as he gets signed, he's going to be their DH. He's going to play 140 games or 130 games, and he's going to hit 25 plus home runs. And it just seems to be the case. So this number five for me came down to two guys. It came down to Jorge Soler, who did not make the list, and Marcelo Zuna as well. And the reason being is Jorge Soler was kind of. Uh, valued last year because he quote got his strikeout rate down and that strikeout rate which is has been really high over the course of his career 28 29 30 percent was dropped into like the 24 percent range which is about where Marcelo Zuna has sat his entire career which to me if I'm projecting into this season and I'm picking between those two guys I would feel more comfortable at the dish with Marcelo Zuna even though his batting average was higher last year than it's been in a long time he had 274 I don't expect him to hit 274 again this season coming up if he falls back to like a 250 255 range but the home runs stay in the 30 to 35 range the RBIs are going to be up just simply because of the fact that the Braves are going to be on base and they're going to score runs you're going to see a guy who is going to be productive once again and he's probably going to be in that 30 90 
255 range for the for for a batting average sake. Even a small dip for Ozuna in your in the 2024 season, I'm going to take him at number five. Yeah, uh, it's certainly a guy I considered. Uh, but please just call an Uber and Lyft, Marcel. Um, please. All right, number four, I'm going to go with Josh Naylor uh, and Tyler. This is kind of funny because. The Guardians have <laughs> shown up on these top five lists a decent amount. Uh, second base, right field, third base. Uh, we haven't done starting pitchers in bullpen yet, but there's a chance there's more Guardians. Why aren't the Guardians good? I don't understand it. Uh, but Josh Naylor, uh, you know, can play the field, but I think he's settling into the DH there. A two and a half war last year with a really impressive 308 batting average. Uh, his on base got as high as almost 360. Uh, his OPS plus last year was a 133. Can give you a little bit of pop. Uh, would like to see that number go up a little bit and consistently be over the 20 mark. He only had 17 last year, uh, but he did get decent run production with 97 RBIs last year for the Guardians. Uh, I'm going to put Josh Naylor at number four for myself. Who you got, Renee? I'm going with the 2021 World Series MVP that has a new home with the Giants. Jorge Soler. Uh, listen, Soler was one that the Giants were excited to add because of what they were looking to fill that spot. It actually, JT Martinez was one they were hoping to bring in as their DH, and Soler was the guy for the job. Now, for Soler, a 250 batting average last season, finished with 36 home runs, 75 RBIs, and a huge power hitter, obviously. Uh, that's what you want from your DH. That's what you need. And I think him with the Giants this season is going to be pretty interesting to see. Um, and I think he's going to lock in as one of the best. We'll see. We uh, see. San Francisco needs him, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Who do you got? Tyler? San Francisco needs Jesus, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But uh, So I, I think to me, uh, this is going to be we talked about what is what, like how are we ranking these guys is it projection is it who we think are the best just straight like strictly numbers projection. and that is why if we're playing projection with my num my number four hitter i'm gonna go with the guy that i'm just all i'm waiting for on this guy is for him to stay healthy because the pop is there the average has gotten better it's Eloy jimenez from the mm. chicago white Sox, and i think that he's that he burst onto the scene in 2019 he played 122 games where he hit 31 home runs which is still a career high to this point um, and then health, and obviously the COVID season kind of uh, truncated his uh, next three years. Good just, use of truncated. <laughs> just, Look at you. Uh, yeah, wow, the words, are, words are hard. <laughs> uh, just uh, 55 games in each of the two seasons in 2020 and 2021. Obviously, COVID was uh, a, a, por a large portion of that, just 84 and 22. Last year, he played 120 games, got almost 500 plate appearances, had almost 400, over 450 at-bats. He hit 18 home runs, drove in 64. I'm looking for that power number to finally come back, the one that saw him hit 31 home runs in his rookie season. I don't expect him to get back to 31, but if 18 can get to 25, I think that that 25 is enough to put him on a list because the RBIs are going to be low. It's him and Robert and a bunch of bums. Like that Chicago White Sox <laughs> team stinks. So if he's hitting two, 270, he strikes out less than 100 times a year. He's only struck out over 100 once in his career. Again, probably due in part to the fact that he hasn't played a lot of games in three of his five seasons. But last year, just 93 strikeouts. He doesn't walk a ton, so the OBP is a lot lower than you would expect for a guy who hit 270. But if he can get up into that 25 home run range, you get maybe to 30 doubles and play a full season, I really like the productivity that Elo Jimenez could, uh, can, can, can produce in 2024. Yeah, he's certainly one of those guys that can be on this top five list at the end of the year. All right, our top three, I would imagine, unless anybody's got some real takes here, Today, are, I did not have anything are, are spicy. pretty uh, uniformed here, uh, so I'll kick it off at number three. I'm going to go with our boy. We love him. We were just talking about him down in Florida, taking a photo with a fan, Kyle Schwarber. Now, his, his war last year was only 0.6. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens with his war now that he's out of the field um, and becoming a DH. Does that increase some? It probably should a little bit. Now, he's statistically... Um, one of the strangest cases ever uh, with a 197 batting average last year, but a 343 on base. Um, he's consistent with his power in his first two years in Philly. He hit 46 and 47. Uh, my main problems with Kyle Schwarber are not that he isn't a good baseball player. It's with him batting leadoff and playing defense. One of those has been eliminated. He doesn't have to play defense anymore. He gets mm -hmm. to fill that true DH. I mean, this guy is like, kind of a DH dream, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, there's two that are better than them, better than him because they're freaks. Uh, but Kyle Schwarber is like your prototypical perfect DH. 
go up there, get on base at a pretty good clip, and, and swing out of your shoes and send balls to the moon. Uh, Kyle Schwarber, number three for me. Yeah, uh, listen, my number three, my no surprise, as you were just talking about him, Kyle Schwarber also. Last year for Kyle Schwarber, as you mentioned, that 197 batting average, 47 home runs, 104 RBIs, an 817 OPS, and a 122 OPS plus. He last year also led the league in strikeouts, as we know. Uh, and for Kyle Schwarber, one of the main reasons why I think this year, more than any year, in addition to the fact he's not going to be uh, out in the outfield at all, Kyle Schubert also has been working on his approach. So he talked a lot about how he's been trying to get the ball more to left center field. He's trying not, he's trying, not trying to guide the ball or anything like that. He wants to just be able to adjust his swing. If the pitch is away, he'll hit it away. If the pitch is in, he'll pull it in. And how last year he pulled a career high 52.5% of the time, pulled the ball, and his career mark is a 43.7% pulling the ball. So he's trying oh, to I reduce that was much his higher. strikeouts. I know he's trying to reduce his strikeouts by, you know, minimizing how much he's pulling the ball so much and being a little bit less aggressive early on in the count. So he's also making much, much needed tweaks to his game. So if we can get less strikeouts, we continue to get the productivity. He's not in the outfield, definitely a top DH uh, and could be, as you mentioned, higher if it weren't for the guys that are sitting at one and two. Yeah. What was it? 215 strikeouts last year. If he could, he, if he 217 could, strikeouts 17. he led the league with. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he gets on base at 343 is pretty incredible for somebody yeah. that strikes out. He is the definition of boomer bust. <laughs> uh, dude, who do you got there? Guess Tyler? what? Guess what? Nerds. No matter if you like it or not, Kyle Schwarber is the Phillies leadoff hitter this year and you're going to deal with it. And that's I, all you're getting out I of it. I tried to not, Bring it up. Uh, it's it's try. Regardless it's if you happening. like him at the DH spot, or excuse me, at the uh, leadoff spot or not, which I happen to, I'm also going Kyle Schwarber at three. Because, listen, I, you're going to hit 197. People are going to go, well, it's not a good enough average. I don't like it. But your OBP is at almost 350, and you've hit 93 home runs in, each, in, in the last two seasons since joining this team. You've driven in 198, and sure, you struck out 415 times <laughs> over the last two years. But guess what? If you're driving in 198 runs and hitting – Hitting 93 home runs. I'll find a spot. In the I'm gonna for you. I'm gonna find a spot in the lineup for you. And for the Phillies, the way that they win is with Kyle Schwarber at the leadoff spot. I know it's not perfect, but honestly, it's a better alter. It, it, it's a better choice than people want to give him credit for. Just <laughs> simply because he does strike out a lot and the batting average is low, but the OBP is strong enough to be a leadoff well, hitter. Speed factor too. And, and quite frankly, him getting an extra at bat he later. Might be faster now. Him He's getting an down. extra at bat later in the game uh, <laughs> is. Probably some – he's one of the guys that I would want at the plate late in the game, especially if you're trailing. You want to put a run on the yeah. board quickly. He's the type of guy that you want – You want unless you're trying to move runners along and, ma along and manufacture a run. If I'm trying to get a run quick, it's Kyle Schwarber. I got 93 home runs in the last two years. As much as you hate it, he's the number three DH, and he's your leadoff hitter this year. Yeah, yeah. I know in the chat, MEDBDVF saying, depending on where you, you bat Harper, Schwarber can hit four. Um, Spiral Out's also mentioning he's just accepted – Schwarber as a leadoff forever. Namaste on that one. Agreed. But yeah, it is for us. It's interesting. We all have him at number three, but uh, definitely his being a leadoff versus if he's later on in the batting order is, is the biggest area that people are not happy with. But he's, yeah. he's going to be leadoff. Yeah. All right. Number two, he's I have happening. a feeling we're all uniformed here throughout our top threes. Look like they're probably a uh, lockstep here unless somebody went hot take and put my number two. Jordan Alvarez, if it wasn't for baseball Jesus uh, out of Japan, Shoei Otani, Jordan Alvarez is undeniably the top DH in the game. Unfortunately for him, Shoei Otani exists, and he does walk this earth. Uh, 4.6 war out of Jordan. He hits righties. He hits lefties. He hits for average. He gets on base. Uh, his OPS plus was a 170 last year. 31 home runs, 97 RBIs. Uh, at 407 on base, he's a career 390 on base. Uh, so we're like, wow, Kyle Schwarber hit three, got on base at 343 last year. Yeah, Jordan Alvarez is like, hold my beer. I do it at almost a 400 click. Uh, this guy's tremendous. Looks like he's probably the full time DH finally. So much like Schwarber, not a great defensive player, mm -hmm. uh, and gets into his true spot. Number two DH in baseball, Jordan. He's tremendous. Yeah, I mean, the defensive side was the biggest difficulty for him. So now that he's a DH, Air Jordan is also my number two as well. Uh, as you mentioned, Jamie, just looking at the production that he brings to the bat, 
Uh, th- then those 31 homers, 97 RBIs, 293 batting average, 990 OPS. Did have an injury last year. Didn't even get a yeah, full that, season that was, I meant to say, of Jordan, which is wild. Yeah. I mean, he missed six weeks with an oblique injury. Didn't even play the entire season and still put out that productivity. Definitely, definitely number two, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot to add because in any other world, on any other day, in any other galaxy, this guy's the number one DH. And it's it's unfortunate for him that maybe the, the most talented player to ever walk the planet is going to be number one. Just to add a little bit further what you guys talked about, in 146 at-bats last year, Jordan Alvarez hit 295 against lefties. He hit 294 against righties. I think we all know that Jordan Alvarez is a left-handed hitter. Like, that's insane to me that your mm-hmm. splits are near, are, are at least average-wise, are better against same side than it is against the opposite side. Now, the OBP and the slugging are a little bit higher against righties. That comes with the fact that 25 of his 31 home runs came against right-handed pitching. But the fact remains, like, this guy mashes against both lefties and righties. 56 mm-hmm. extra base hits last year, 18 of them came against left-handed pitching. Like, you can't pitch to this guy and feel confident that you're going to, oh, we're going lefty-lefty. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, he doesn't, doesn't care. Matter. Jordan doesn't Alvarez matter. is a freak at the plate, like, and, and I think he's going to be good for quite some time. He's only 30, I believe. Um, and and this guy, like, to me, like, oh, no, I'm sorry, he's 26. I, oh I, I even gave yeah, him. I was going to say, I don't even I, think he's that I, old. Yeah, he's not even that old. He's I was looking at, 26. looking at the wrong box score. He's only 26. This guy is, I, I don't know how he's underrated, but he might be. Like, this guy's yeah. so he's a top damn 10 good. player who could, you could make the case, is underrated. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, by all accounts, he's a top 10 player in sure. baseball. And he's, and he's only 26. Still, and you could say, like, he can probably, you know, give some of these other people in the top five a run for their money. He's mm-hmm. that good. Uh, all right, number one. Uh, I guess this is pretty simple here. Uh, Shoei Otani. Uh, if heard. Oh, of him. that's your number one. Yeah, I'm going out on a limb. I'm gonna say. Wait, are we considering him a DH? Uh, yeah. what? I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I was like, oh, Renee. Oh no. Woo, that was hard to keep a straight face uh, for. Woo. Yes. Hot, that was tough. I couldn't let that linger. Hot take alert. Shoei Otani, <laughs> top DH in baseball. This guy's a freak. He had a 10 war last year. Now, part of that was he was pitching to a point, so that helps bolster that war. Uh, He got almost 500 at-bats last year. Hit above 300, hit 304. His on-base was a 412. His OPS plus was a 184, which Mm -hmm. is freaking ridiculous. Uh, You know, he's got 44 home runs, 95 RBIs, 100-plus runs scored. The guy's a freak. Uh, he's the best baseball player in the planet. Um, and, and yeah. oh, yeah, he's a Cy Young candidate when he has a healthy arm, too. Just, just Yeah, and all know, those numbers last year were whatever. without even playing a full season. Uh, I'm also obviously going Shoei Otani number one. Uh, to be voted the best designated hitter three years in a row, joining David Ortiz, the only other guy that's won that accolade three years in a row, who, of course, won it five times. Um that pretty special. The things that Otani has been able to accomplish, listen, the numbers aside, to be able to put out that production, you didn't even play an entire season, uh, to also finish, as you mentioned with his numbers last year, 44 homers, 96 RBIs, eight triples, 20 stolen bases, um, and his season was over early September. You know, he was like, I'm done, that's it for me, I'm, I'm injured, I'm out, and still was able to just crush so many metrics. Shohei Otani is in a league of his own and absolutely number one in any positional ranking, whatever position Shohei Otani wants to play, he will be the number one guy in that position. Uh, definitely top player in baseball, without a doubt. Shohei Otani and only a DH right now, not even fully a two-way player, which I don't want to see again because I'm scared. Tyler, who you got? Number <laughs> yeah, one. To, to quote uh, Ariana Grande, thank you, next. Okay. Like, Let's do this for Wait, let's just wow, real quick. Wow, Tyler. Uh, let thank the you, next. I don't know this. <laughs> Led the league in OBP, slugging OPS, OPS plus, total bases, home runs. Like, do we need to continue? Like, this guy is. I, I genuinely I'm still confused about the Ariana Grande reference. I, I, I genuinely <laughs> believe that this is the best player to ever walk the planet, and that's insane to me. Like, this guy is only 28 years old. He's a three-time All Star. He's a two-time MVP. He's a Rookie of the Year. Next year, he's this year. We've talked about it. He's only DHing, and I would still take him as a top five player in this game. Like, this guy is off the charts good. He's got sneaky speed. He stole 20 bags for the second time in three years. He hit eight triples for the second time in three years. Like, the only thing that this guy can't, like, the the only knock on this guy this year is that he's not going to pitch. And that's, like, just not his fault. You know what I mean? Like, 
I just well, it does make me like, wonder. I, 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 that contract, I'm like swooning yeah. over Shohei talking about this I know, guy. But I know. two Tommy Johns. By like, the way, he's 29. Eesh. His birth. He turned my my BFF Shohei turned 29 July 5th. I bet you didn't know his birthday is July 5th. I did not. And you also didn't know about Ariana Grande. You should have seen guys. You should have seen JB back here. Oh, you couldn't see us on camera. I don't know what that reference <laughs> he was. Like, was. What? What? Uh, Davis claiming your main card just got handed in. I love Ariana Grande. I love Ariana Grande. I Do you even you know who one, that is? I know the name. I couldn't tell you one thing she's ever done. No. Do you even know what? She, do you know what she does? She's hot. I know that. And Do you she, know like what her job is? She sings. Right? Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. We got uh, but one. I couldn't tell you like. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if I heard something. Yeah, like, you've heard her song. I'm like, sure you've been. I couldn't tell you like. Out to like at song. least with Taylor Swift, I know she did the uh, "Shake It Off" song. Like I got that. I got one. Well, now you know another one. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. No, Thank no, you. Next. No, no, no okay. clue. Okay. This is all Greek to me. Okay. With gyro. Yeah. Well, listen, Um, you know, maybe start listening to Mariana Grande. Uh, probably start not going to happen. Some Mariana. But, um... Or She's Ariana, nice to look at. People... Why does the metalhead have to be the one to explain Ariana Grande <laughs> to you? Yeah, she's she's certainly pretty. She's beautiful. Yeah. She's so cute, and she's, she's got this, also like, extremely gifted singer. She's such a good. Singer. I'll take your word for it. I'm not. She's, you know what? Her she's, voice actually she's is not up there, like a Mariah either. Carey type, um, where she just can hit these. Like her range is so high. Of like, ah. I'll take. I'll there take you your word you for that? it. You hear that? You hear that? That was a little Ariana for you. What do you She's think her net there. worth is? This is a game I play with a myself lot, sometimes. probably. And this is all just based off of Google results, so who knows how accurate a lot. Her this net is. worth? Net worth. What do you think? I get, I got it in front of me, Tyler. <laughs> more than me. Hypothetical man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys don't like Ariana either, by the way. What the heck? You're missing Pitbull, absolutely Pitbull, Ariana, nothing. like you guys. What is wrong with you guys? I'll back you up on the Ariana Grande. Thank I think you. she's. Her I think she's tremendous. Great. And you know what? She I'm crosses Lisa over. Keys, man. Oh, I yeah, love Alicia. Too. But Ariana's a That's whole different type of singer, and she crosses over into so many different lanes because, as Kim's mentioning, she also acts. She's going to be in the new Wicked movie. She does Spanish music. She does, like, love songs. She'll do, like, the broken up, heartbreaking. She'll give you a sing song. She'll give you a dance song. She'll give you something a little more ratchet. Ran Randy guessed 350 mil. What oh, do wait, got? we're still doing that. Yes, um, net worth guessing I I'm going to say it's not that high. I'm gonna go I don't like because she does. She also remember she acted on Nickelodeon on yeah, Victorious. Like I don't know how much there's of that horror is still stories around. about that I actors on Nickelodeon not making their money. That is also true. Um, um, I would go one. I'm gonna go one seventy. Not bad. What do you got? I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the higher end. I'm gonna go four hundred something. Ooh, well Tyler would win. Ah, dang uh, it! Without I lost going again. over. Because you went over and Tyler was closer uh, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Ariana Grande's net worth is. 240 mil. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Let me hold nice the Nice chunk mil. of change. He's a quarter of a billionaire. That's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, Dave um, is saying that the Nickelodeon show was banned in his house. It was so cringe. It was very cringe. It was very cringe. Yeah. You don't um, know that either, though. Yeah. But that's well, okay. I have a couple years until my girls grow into. Another yeah. proud dad moment this weekend. Oh. Um, Skylar requested Tribe Called Quest in the car on Saturday. What? Wow. I, my head almost exploded. Wait, not Moana? No, so we'd been listening to so much Moana that Addie was like, we're not listening to Moana on this ride. What do you want to listen to? And Skylar goes, Mom, can we listen to what we listened to the other day and try call Quest? And I was like, you want to listen to- She even to did the name? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because one of their songs, Can I Kick It, is on yes. either a, um, a soundtrack or it a, is. a trailer. I'm like picturing it, but I can't think of the movie of so it. So she asked what, she's always kind of liked, she likes Metro and the Spideyverse soundtrack, so she likes hip hop. And Addie, you know, was teaching her a little. That's, tribe what, that's called how Quest. kids learn about music because and my heart it'll was be. I was yeah. in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Maybe that was it. Um, so it was it was oh, pretty cool. Moment. I love that. I love yeah, that. So, Moana is a quality movie. All right, uh, we are on our way out what of here. What can Renee, I say except but you're welcome? Without. We're not getting out of here without torturing you first. No, this I thought is... we were great where we were. This is a good spot to end no, it. No, we're going to We do did that. start a little bit late, so technically we're not too, 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 too yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm trying to, you know. Let's just, let's just wrap up the movies here, that we so like. I'm on a heater so I got to keep it going. Well, I've gotten two fairly welcome. obscure ones in you're a row welcome. here. All right, Tyler, what uh, is the difficulty scale in our final week of Guess That Swing? I'm, I'm going to give this one like a seven. You know what, This is going to be tough. 
I see what's happening here. <laughs> You're face to face with greatness, and it's strange. I, <laughs> open your eyes. I, 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 would, I would not, I would not I call this player song. greatness. That's, that's okay. all, all I'm right, going to say. I'm done stalling. Bring it on. Well, we'll be, uh, I'm oh, going to say that's, wow. ooh, that's what? a righty. That's a righty. What is the body? Sh wait. Wait. That's the right field Why hit. is it facing the, the wrong way? I feel like all of our swings have been going the other direction. I'm pretty sure that's a righty. Oh, good Lord. Uh, I don't know. Now Jamie, Jamie all, all I'm going to tell you, Jamie, if that, that hitter was right-handed, they were so late. Yeah, I was going to say that's a hit so down the right late. field line. So it's a lefty? Oh, this is the bat. Oh, he's facing us. I, again, I see both ways. He's facing us. Is what it? Yeah, because if his back is to us, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I guess it's a lefty. Okay. He's facing you. He is facing us. Okay, then it's a lefty. Um, I can't see anything. I also now see like a president's silhouette in the uh, uh, in his back. The nose cuts into it a little too much. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? Like, I see like a f a face silhouette. Um, oh, a left handed. Uh, interesting that you're seeing that now. Yeah, my, so it is lefty is people in the chat. We've already done Bryce Harper. Uh, we're probably at the bottom of the barrel here as we are uh, in our final days of Guess That Swing. So oh, sad. Man. Ew, it's so, it's, it's so hard to say goodbye. Lefty. <laughs> man. <laughs> this is like a really very, this is a very peculiar, like the body, is this a little stomach I'm seeing here? Is this a little like thigh muscle? Lefty, lefty, like the body lefty. shape. Of, I can't, and I can't figure out his head because it's the way he's facing us. We've already done Cody Clark. Is this a current player? Stubbs. Wait, did you give us a grade? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, like a seven. About Moana. Maybe oh, okay. even an eight. Yeah. I, oh, okay. This nothing is, jumps out to me here. And the is bat this a and the current hands. Player? You don't get Might the extension. It's not giving you that answer. Oh man, Tyler. Um, <laughs> You're so mean. I'm just running us. out of lefties that we haven't played yet. Travis Lee, he's I mean, tall he says, too. <laughs> Von Hayes. Is he does seem tall? Uh, wait, is he? Okay, wait. We did already establish he's a lefty. It's no. Rico Bronya. Oh my Atlanta. We did Brandon Marsh. It's not right? Rico Bronya. Um, you did do Brandon Marsh, yeah. correct? Um. Damn, I'm just straight up running out of lefties. Is my problem. I'm gonna just toss out some names and see what's. Did you know Rico Bronya hit 20 home runs three straight years for the Phillies? Did he really? Yeah. Wow. Hit over 100 RBIs back-to-back -back seasons. Wow. What? I mean, those were some dark days. Some bad baseball teams. <laughs> yeah. Lefty. All right. MBD said could be Rico Bronya. It's not, but it could be. Ooh, oh, that's not a bad guess, Spiraler out. JK. He seems taller. Huh. I am like. I do see like some bigger thighs. Like it's giving. No, we've already done a Banyas, Neil. And make sure everybody's hitting that thumbs up know, button Vince here while we J guess Cave, that swing. Uh, Kim saying JK. We've already done Raul. Don Brown, I think. Did we do Don Brown? I feel like we guessed him, but I don't know I that don't we think did we've him. done Don Brown, no. Ooh. Bobby Abreu is That's... prior. <sighs> Travis Janikowski. I, well, you would see the hair with him, wouldn't you? I forgot. Oh, he... yeah. The hair would be flowing. Yeah. For sure. I forgot he was here. Cody Ash. A lot of people a saying Cody Ash. Jake Cave's an interesting top, guy. Already, top top answers have been have been most recently used answers have been Cody Ashy and Jake Cave. And I think Cody Ash is still in the league. Isn't he's he coaching? Hanging? He's coaching. I think he's with Can the we, Orioles organization. Yeah, we talked about him recently. He had just come into the news for something. Um I'm right, gonna I'm send gonna you a name. Because I, I'm just like left handed batter. Uh Bam. Done. Done. What other journeyman left-handed hitters? Do we yeah, he is the uh, <laughs> upper level or upper upper level hitting coordinator. Uh, Dave Dewar, offensive strategy coach Ooh, too. Ooh, offensive strategy. Hit the ball. There's your strategy. Uh, 2006 <laughs> to current day Phillies are uh, the date range. So have we both submitted? Here? All right, guys, yeah. you're locked in. I, Two uh, separate answers. Have you heard a correct answer? I have. Oh no. Two separate answers. Jamie right. gave us Cody Ashy. Renee went with Greg Dobbs. Again. Neither are correct. Oh, lovely. Uh, JK. I cannot believe, Jamie, this is your I, fault. I almost went with it. Call him Nick. Call him Jake. Whatever you'd Damn like it. to go with. It is Jake Cave. Yeah. I was between Ashy or Cave and should have gone with Cave because he was more topical. Uh, what are you going to do? My, my hot streak comes to an end. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with us today. What Lou Brown say?
It has happened before. <laughs> it can happen again. Well, that's a Debbie Downer. I would like to watch Major League one of these days. I saw some people in the Discord talking about it. Um, I think it was Yeastmeister was talking about how it's a tradition of his every spring training to watch spring uh, Major League. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. I got to do that. If you're um, looking for something else new to watch, there's football on ice. Did you ever I did see, see that? that clip going around this weekend. Yes. It looked pretty funny. I would watch that. that was, it was entertaining. Yeah, I would watch that. Anything where people can fall and potentially hurt themselves, I'm in on. And Dave, I feel like this was a seven because it was hard to tell. I know he's saying it's nowhere near a seven. I think but he's like, saying it's harder. I was saying it's a, oh. I gave a seven because he's an active player. Oh, okay. I felt like Good, it was seven because yeah. like, you couldn't if really he was tell. A, if he was not on the roster and hadn't been for like five years, yeah. it's probably like a nine. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, for so sure, we definitely. are in at 11 a.m. all this week. Make sure you're following along with John Foley, who's down in what uh, Fort Myers uh, yeah. for the Twins and Red Sox games these next two days. John is killing it with the content he's putting out, and he's putting up great stories on allphly.com. So if you can't follow along, you can follow along with John. Make sure you're, uh, you know, following him as he brings you day to day. On the Phillies, John was working hard this weekend out yes, there. Yes, he was. Both he's games. doing a great job. He's just, killing it. He's, so, all, he's in all, yeah, all sure the right you, places. Make sure you Pumping follow out along with John for a little uh, little pulse on spring training. Uh, but for Tyler Zuli, Renee Washington, Jamie Lynch, myself, uh, we will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. And we will see you then. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a great day, everyone. See ya. Bye. We all silly like the man.